What's going on to all my Netflix fans out there and welcome back to my channel Movie Files. Elliot back again with a brand new Netflix series review and today we're talking about a new dark comedy thriller or I should say, let me go back, the new dark comedy murder mystery thriller by the name of Very Long Title, so bear with me, The Woman in the House Across the Street from The Girl in the Window starring Kristen Bell. I got a chance to check it out early and I'm really excited to let you all know what I thought about it but more importantly, is this murder mystery drama comedy worth checking out? We're going to break it all down here in this review but before we do so make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts if you're new to the channel we're on the quest to 20,000 subscribers so if you want to be a part of the community make sure you're subscribed and you're hitting that notification bell and as you can see on the screen now if you enjoyed this review we'll make sure to like the review and share the review but more importantly once you've seen this show with a very long title the woman in the house across the street from the girl in the window make sure to share your pros your cons did you laugh did you find the murder mystery interesting and did you know who the killer was let's talk about it all in the comments below so before we get into my pros and my cons and if i recommend you all watch this let's talk about this trailer which if you all haven't seen the trailer i'm gonna leave that link in the bio when i saw the trailer last month i said to myself two things is this a parody of a film Netflix made a year ago called The Woman in the Window starring Amy Adams, which I actually reviewed on this channel and kind of being a parody of that genre? Or is it a serious murder mystery like a, a la The Girl in Train? I'm going to let you all know it's a little bit of column A and a little bit of column B. It is a parody, but it's also a pretty interesting murder mystery. Does it actually work out in the day? Well, let's get into my pros first. First and foremost, when it comes to those tropes, which I love, I love murder mysteries first and foremost. Just last year alone, we had some of the best murder mysteries on TV. The White Lotus, The the Only Murderers in the Building, uh, Mayor of Sound. I'm a big fan of murder mysteries. And Netflix seems to house a lot of great murder mysteries, documentaries, movies, shows, so on and so forth. So I love the genre but we all gotta admit when it comes to that genre there are so many tropes that are just so laughable and just so like unbelievable but we still kind of you know enjoy it for what it is this show is poking fun of that genre and also poking fun of those tropes and i won't give too many of them away but i just think of think about that amy adams movie and her phobia and her alcoholism with wine well, the transition to Anna in this show, she's afraid of the rain. She is consuming so much wine that by the end of each episode, I feel tipsy. And then you think of the other characters in the show, the nosy neighbor, the husband that just lost his wife, the mysterious new girlfriend, a stripper story, and just there's just someone in the attic. It plays into those tropes and actually makes it pretty funny. Now, not all of it works, but for the most part, I found those tropes to per work perfectly and to really poke fun of those tropes. And, and, and to be honest with you all, it's not a straight up parody, but it does poke fun of the genre. And again, I, I miss parodies. I'm not going to lie. Like I miss the days of airplane, naked gun, scary movie. So it does kind of does that. Like, especially I'm going to give you all a little tidbit. If you watch the show or if you've seen the show, did you all notice there's a particular character, uh, Kristen Bell character, Anna, visits a graveyard and a gravestone? And did you notice the gravestone had different things set on it? Like stuff like that is where it reminds me of a parody. But I got to say, as far as applauding the creators, the jokes and, and making fun of the tropes worked very well for me for the most part. But I also want to talk about what really kind of kept me invested in the show. I'm not going to lie. I was pretty invested in the who done it, who's the killer, why is the person killing people? And I got to say... I had my thoughts on who I thought the killer was, but the show does a good job of kind of throwing red herrings at you, and it does that to the, literally the very last episode. So I got to say, from my personal taste, I couldn't help myself but to kept pressing play because I'm like, dude, I, I need to know who this killer was and why the killer is doing what they're doing. So I have to say I was invested in the murder mystery, but also the thing that kept me invested in the show was I love 45-minute, hour-long shows that really dive deep into the characters. You know, we have investing into this, this narrative and kind of this long drawn out dramas or comedies, whatever the case may be. But I do miss the days where we can get like a 25 minute, 28 minute show. And this is that. This is 25, 28 minutes max. It's about eight episodes. And you talk about a quick binge. I binge this within like 24 hours. And, you know, not everyone has the time. I, I, I found time to, to binge it out. But I have to say, this is a pretty light binge. And I really enjoy something easy, not too heavy, and just being able to go through a series. So I do give that, that benefit to this show. So the murder mystery kept me engaged. It was easy to watch. 
and the tropes that this show puts forth of are definitely some of my positives, but I definitely want to shine a light on the star of the show, and that's Kristen Bell. Now, I've been a fan of hers for a very long time. I think of her forgetting Sarah Marshall, her time at Veronica Mars, which I didn't watch the show in its entirety, but every now and then when it was on CW, I really kind of liked that show. Of course, a lot of you all might know her as the voice of Frozen, uh, you know, Gossip Girls, or the meme, the sloth. I've been waiting my whole life for this moment. She, I like her. She's a likable actress. She's not, to me, and to be fair, I don't think she's like a mega star, but she she does what she's good at and she is good at being this kind of a uh, character you root for you know we see Anna again without giving too much away of the plot but if you've seen the trailer she had a family incident which by the way when you see what happened to one of her family members it's it's, it's sad don't get me wrong <laughs> in the way of the narrative that the show gives it to you but it's also very funny what happens to this particular character but she has a tragedy she's now by herself she's consuming all this alcohol i don't know what the hell she does for a living by the way which is another funny trope that this show has is like how is this person living in this big house and they don't even work a single day in their life so going back to her as a character i, I really enjoy kristen bell in this role the show again wants you to be invested in the more serious nature of it but it's also poking fun of what's going on and i thought kristen bell was the perfect kind of catalyst to bring those different tones to this show so I thought she was fantastic. So again, those are really the positives that kind of come to mind. But there are some negatives. Starting off with, again, it's very hard to kind of play in multiple tones. Again, this is a murder mystery comedy. And I got to say, and, and it's very hard to please everyone. I have to say... I was 50-50 on the jokes. There were some jokes, again, where you find out what happens to Anna and her a family member of hers. I found stuff like that very funny. The last episode of this show I found to be very hilarious when we meet the killer and the back and forth with the killer was so funny to me. And there's little moments throughout the series I'm like, that's pretty funny. The headstone's pretty funny. It's like moments like that that work for me, but then there are moments when the show tries to be funny like tries to be a parody and I thought it kind of fell flat and I'm not going to give specifics here but there were moments and again I don't blame the creators because what I find to be funny you might not find to be funny what I found to be not funny you might find uh, vice versa so it is kind of hard to please everyone but I have to say 50% of the time it worked but the other 50% it kind of fell flat for me and also kind of going back into my criticisms the to me if the show would have been more of a straight drama more of a you know murder mystery it would have probably been like a fantastic show in that sense but i'm not gonna lie i did find the jokes to be funny but i felt like when it comes to the tones the murder mystery elements were way more superior than the comedic elements to me and i wish it was just more blended in more uh, perfectly and if it wasn't if they couldn't find that blend i wish it would have maybe shine a light better on, or more a light on the murder mystery which i would have to say as far as the first three four episodes was more kind of playing in the in the parody comedy elements and then the last half of the show kind of got more serious and kind of it was still funny but it got a little bit more into Who's the killer? Why did the killer do what they're doing? So I have to say to me, I lean towards more of the second half of the show being more of the highlight versus the first half of the show. I almost, I'm not going to lie. After the first two episodes, I'm like, I don't really know if I can vibe with this show, but it wasn't until, okay, every episode ended with this cliffhanger that kind of brought me back to wanting more. So those are pretty much my main criticisms because at the end of the day, I think the show knows what it is. And at the end of the day, it can't please everyone. So with that being said, before I give you all my overall thoughts, if you stuck around to this point in the video, make sure you're liking the video, sharing the video, but more importantly, leave me your thoughts in the comments. Overall, I got to say the woman in the house across the street from the girl in the window at first started off a little bit rocky, but it ended on a pretty good high note. I got to say again, when it comes to the murder mystery and the way that the show kind of paced itself out 25, 28 minutes long, I enjoyed it for what it was. Not all the comedy worked, but there was some comedic beats that I found to be very hilarious, especially when it's poking fun of the genres and the tropes that we see within this murder mystery genre. Kristen Bell was really uh, charming, very entertaining, and, and a sprinkle of the other characters. The husband next door was a very mysterious character. The working man, the uh, handyman was kind of an interesting character. The stripper story, Rex, the airline attendant. There's some really interesting elements that I found to enjoy about the show. So with that being said... I recommend you all give it a watch. It's a super easy binge. I think you're going to find some of the comedic beats to be funny. I think you're going to be really invested in the murder mystery. So with that being said, I'm giving this an approval. Give it a shot. And when you do, let me know your pros and your cons and what your, your favorite elements about this show. And let's talk about that in the comments. I will let, I'm going to leave the last few minutes talking a little bit of spoilers. So I'm going to put spoilers on the screen now for those that have seen this series and watched it all. Just a couple of things I want to point on. 
Did you know who the killer was? And I, I say that because we all know, especially if you're a fan of this genre like I am, it's always the person you least expect it. So I thought in my mind, especially when I'm like, this is pretty much almost the same, and this is a spoiler if you haven't seen The Woman in the Window with Amy Adams, and, and in a lot of movies like this, my mind went straight to the little girl. But I'm like, there's no way the little girl killed her mom, you know, killed the, the new girlfriend, and killed the guy at the end of the episode, the handyman. But end up being the little girl. <laughs> For most of the show, I was thinking it was the handyman because he was just being weird and we find out he lived in the attic. But then I'm, I was very surprised. I'm like, I knew it was a little girl, but I didn't think they were going to pull it off. But then when I think about it, the show was pretty ridiculous. So it was very funny seeing Anna going against a little girl. It reminded me so much of Child's Play when she was throwing a little girl against the house and she was like stabbing her. And, and that last episode, the first 10 minutes was just so funny to me. So did you all think it was a little girl? Let me know that in the comments. Again, we're talking spoilers here. And if we're talking about it in the comments, make sure you're putting that in the comment section that you will be spoiling some of this for people that haven't seen it won't get spoiled. But also, when it comes to the spoilers, did you all, what do you think about the finale? When we see Glenn Close's character, which I know, she, I can't think of the name of the show. But many, many years ago, it was Glenn Close and Rose Byrne. They went on a show on FX. I think it was like a murder mystery. I might be wrong. I don't know if they were like playing fun of that character that she was in the show. But neither here nor there. Glenn Close is in the finale. She's the woman that's mysteriously killed in the bathroom and she's not on the plane. Do you want to see a sequel or a continuation or a season two of the show? I would like to see if they do it because again at the end of the day i i like the show i don't think necessarily i need a sequel or need a season two but let me know if that's something you guys would like based on your experience with the show would you want a season two of this show and if you do what's the name of that going to be the woman in the plane next to the plane going to over i don't know I, i'm being silly now <laughs> let me know if that's something you all want to see but that's just a little little tidbits i want to talk about in the spoiler section so if you stuck around to this point in the video i appreciate you all again make sure you're liking the video sharing the video subscribing to the channel because we're almost at 20,000 subscribers i appreciate every single one of you all hope you enjoyed this review hope you're staying safe as you can see on the screen now Subscribe to my channel, check out my other content. We'll catch you in the next video.